Hi, everyone. I think that we wait something like 30 more seconds. And we restart the Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Let's start. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome on the CI team update uh, today. Today is a Valentine's Day, uh, quite inconvenient. Let's maybe start with the accomplishments. Uh, for me, the biggest accomplishment is basically a team. We have this group of people, not all of them uh, that are part of the CI team are on this picture. But what is more important is what we are actually working with uh, during our challenges that we are trying to solve. <laughs> okay, this was the uh, YouTube video, live photos. So first of all, this is Valentine's Day. Thank you very much for everyone, but not only these people that are enlisted here. This, if you look at this list, these are basically people that are from different teams that uh, they are production engineers, that they are content managers, that they are support, they are front and back end. It's basically, if you could just take a look, it's just, uh, we are working with pretty much everyone, everyone at the GitHub. It's really great, it's really great, it's really great team effort. But let's talk a little about uh, the engineering side of the CI team update. Mm, with 8.16, we introduced shared runners, uh, minutes, it's still uh, named built minutes, but the truth is uh, that this will allow us to have a github.com shared runners usage uh, under control. We have seen people on github.com using the shared runners for something like uh, 10,000, 20,000, uh, 50,000 built minutes uh, for running their private projects. Uh, we'll be introducing shared runners minutes, uh, probably something like in a, uh, a couple of upcoming days, uh, one week or something like that, uh, where your private projects will be, uh, we have this allowance pipeline quota, uh, which will be, I believe, 2000 minutes per month for your group. It will be really easy because this will also allow us to offer much better service and much better quality of the service. Uh, Mark has been, Madam Mark Poons like did create an issue of killing the build stuff something like probably half year ago or maybe over half year ago. Uh, we've been removing this build stuff for two subsequent months, but we didn't have an alternative for that. But with 8.17, we are introducing this mini pipeline graph, something that you already are probably using on GitLab.com. There are still uh, a few improvements that are coming to mini graph. For example, uh, making this mini graph to be uh, fully refreshed automatically in real time. So this is one of the ways to uh, make this information more visible and make it faster to you to reach the uh, fairy list of bits. But actually this starts with the first step uh, because the next step we started discussing a way to make the merge request widget more performant. And as part of the merge request widget introduce information about the uh, jobs that did fail uh, by also including a easy to uh, expand the job trace uh, view where you could see 20 lines of your job. Something this is what we actually looking usually for. And you uh, go to this failed list, uh, you click on this failed build, you actually usually scrolling to the bottom to see uh, exactly why it did fail. It will be much easier in one of the upcoming releases. But the truth is that we are also investing a lot of uh, effort as part of the CI team uh, into Kubernetes. Uh, we work with, on terminal stuff. Uh, terminal is accessible for GitLab. It's basically one of the key points uh, of idea to production. We also make uh, Kubernetes, uh, we make runner to use Kubernetes and work it well with auto scaling of GKE. Uh, we help with making GitLab run on Kubernetes and actually making uh, sit dance during the Mexico summit. 
Mm, and some time ago, uh, we did introduce this concept of auto-deploy. Auto-deploy that simplifies the uh, building and deployment process of your application, something that will be even more performant when we introduce this new awesome feature, the deploy boards that I will mention a little later. But uh, as with every uh, accomplishments, there are also some concerns. Mm, but let's look at that from a different side. If we think and just look at the people that we have right now in the team, we are basically a full stack team. We just have competencies in pretty much anything and we can effectively uh, uh, work with everyone uh, from GitLab. We just know about the front and back and API runner, code design, auto scaling, GitLab CE, GitLab review apps, Kubernetes, Docker caching, DevOps, infra monitoring performance. This makes us uh, highly efficient and basically allows us to deliver a lot of new features every release. Uh, more of the, about these features in a uh, few minutes. Uh, we are, we are, because we have this flexibility of uh, assigning people, we always have some time to solve a technical debt. And as mentioned, we work with a lot of people from different teams. And it's really crazy when we, when we think about that, that we just achieved that with uh, eight team members, uh, where five of them are regular, and uh, a few more of them are joining uh, to us and help us uh, to improve the CI and CD. But the truth is also that we have a lot of ideas what we can do next uh, and what needs to be improved. Uh, but actually, there is a too few of us. Uh, one of the biggest concerns and challenges for us right now is to make our team bigger. Uh, so we are actually looking for people, uh, hiring them, senior backend developer, uh, senior product manager. But the truth is that and uh, this, uh, this is just beginning, uh, because uh, when we have these people that can guide other people, we're basically looking also for a, a few uh, backend developers that will uh, make it possible for us to deliver much more than we are delivering now. Mm, you may be asking yourself, how can you help us? Uh, it's usually very easy <laughs> because uh, there is a lot of uh, what you can help. We have a lot of uh, ideas what can be improved. And for example, uh, these improvements we could uh, probably divide into three different groups. Improvements that help with our case, the scalability, reliability, and performance. Uh, we're kind of struggling sometimes, not sometimes, maybe even often, with the github.com performance, uh, with the CI with the CI performance on github.com, but also with the performance of GitLab CE tests. Uh, we sometimes just miss the uh, people that could uh, implement these small improvements for to GitLab CI that would make, for example, uh, our testing to have less of this constant time spent on, for example, bundle install. Uh, another bucket is just we always receive a lot of requests from our cons uh, consumers, people that are paying for GitLab E and just want some bugs fixed or some things to be implemented. Uh, but sometimes we are pushing them back uh, because we are either following the vision or we are helping our case or we just not have people uh, to make it happen. And the third area where it could help, we, we quite often have these small bugs that pretty much anyone that even doesn't have any CI experience could go and try to help them fix them uh, uh, by, by themselves or with our guidance how to make it happen. So maybe if you are interested in learning uh, uh, and be a full stack developer or be a part of this full stack, you could just uh, help us on uh, making this uh, to happen. Mm. If I could talk about the plans now, mm. There is this very big thing because right now GitLab CI, uh, the CI team is named CI, CI team. Uh, but the truth is that we have the open merge request. We named the CI team to be CI CD. Uh, we did grow way past the CI in the meaning of the CI. We've been following a lot of, as part of the idea production, delivering a lot of, as part of the CI, CD vision. Mm. which is really great uh, because it allowed us to move uh, features, uh, what people are actually using way, way, way before everyone else. 
Um, but we'll be actually uh, right now by hiring and introducing new people, we'll be also focusing on making the CI, uh, the CI part of the GitLab CI, not CD, more competitive. Uh, more competitive, make it faster, make it better, make it more scalable. Uh, introduce features, for example, the uh, pipeline scheduler, something that we are doing now by uh, uh, curling the uh, API call uh, from the from the Chrome. Uh, it's not ideal. It's it's a workaround, but uh, this is not what people are expecting from us. They are expecting us to be much better than everything uh, is there on the market. Mm, if we would talk about the 9.0 features, this is one of them. Uh, this is the deploy board. It's basically not natural improvement to environments and the review apps that we introduced some time ago. Uh, with deploy board, uh, it's really great concept because you will be actually see uh, when you are deploying your application, what is actually happening to your application. If you have, for example, uh, 50 containers uh, required to deploy your application, this every box there, uh, it will be just live updated that this container is actually running your latest version of application or not latest one. It will greatly enhance visibility of uh, uh, how your application is running right now. Uh, with the future uh, upcoming monitoring features, it will also make it easier as to uh, deduce what to do with your uh, failed deployments. This is basically another step to make the CD vision uh, much more performant, be a way ahead of uh, everything that is out there and just hide this complexity of Kubernetes that we have now uh, by making this really easy to use and really easy to start with. <clears throat> if we would talk about the CI improvement, there is, uh, I think that most of you that heard of these build triggers uh, feature, we'll be actually extending these build triggers to be uh, pipeline triggers. Pipeline triggers that we have a description, we have an owner, and probably in the future, based on these fundamentals of the pipeline triggers, because this is basically the first iteration. The next iteration probably will be uh, will be working on making a separate UI, but maybe with the same backend uh, part to make it these pipeline triggers also be schedulable. Uh, not sure yet how it will gonna look, mm, but. If we consider the pipeline triggers, how they work, this is actually the great fundament for introducing this long requested feature. I believe that this feature for people asking for making the pipeline schedulable is something like probably one year ago. So I would say that a lot of people will be happy when we finally add that. Uh, but we are also thinking about uh, the scalability problems of GitLab.com. You saw the shared runners. This is something that is shipped now but we also ship the uh, default default artifacts expiration uh, on github.com uh, this will be set to some date it's usually very common that most people uh, just don't specify the artifact expiration date and then we have a graph where we see only growing uh, number of uh, artifacts over time and it's growing exponentially and we don't really can control that this will make it it's really easy feature to add but it will actually allow us to enable that on github.com with uh, 9.0 and say that from now on unless you specify something else your artifacts will be removed after probably 30 days or seven days uh, it's still up to decide <laughs> But there is another improvement, uh, something that we've been baking for 9.0, because this is basically the breaking change to your workflow. Uh, cache defaults. Cache defaults were very conservative. Uh, the first time when I created the cache defaults, uh, I assumed that uh, it's more important for me to make sure that the builds doesn't crash. Uh, if, for example, I am running different version of Ruby, rather than make it easy to use and fast. Sorry, uh, I have this uh, sore throat. Mm -hmm. With 9.0, we make the cache, be, uh, always use the default key uh, for everything. You can still overwrite it and make it behave as previously, but the switch will be different. Uh, right now, we'll just make it as much open as possible instead of as much close as possible. Uh, scalability problems and performance. 
Uh, there is a number of things that we are working as part of the performance improvements. One of them is this uh, paginated environment list. Right now, it's not really a uh, widely used uh, view, but the truth is that since we are adding a lot of, and we have big plans of driving the CD vision uh, of GitLab, it will be much uh, more troublesome over the time. So we decided that it's the best time to do it now before we start suffering. It just can happen that for some big projects with a lot of deployments, uh, this view can take seconds to load instead of uh, milliseconds. So it's the highest, the high time to, to make it happen. It's pretty much almost finished with the great work of Filipa and Grzegorz. We also be improving something that I'm saying probably right now for three months, but this is actually the constant improvement. Every release we are shipping another small change that uh, makes uh, API for the CI uh, be faster, be uh, more performant. Uh, we think the 9.0 will be this kind of big uh, point, will be big change, where we actually introduce this long pooling. Uh, this is something that is being worked by Kim. Uh, it's the first part of that uh, was already merged some time ago. The second part uh, is almost finished. And uh, after that, we will be working on the third part. We'll be actually adding um, uh, mechanisms for adding this long pooling. Uh, and we'll be also more aggressive in cancelling builds that, that uh, die for some reason. It just happens that runner can crash, and then you would actually have to wait 24 hours for this runner to be considered failed. By introducing this still stack build to, builds worker, it will happen in one hour now, but in the future it will be, will be try to reducing that even further. Sorry, I cannot find mute. Uh, Runner 9.0, something that was requested by the uh, production team, uh, production engineers, is to uh, migrate Runner to not use the CI API, but use API v4. So we are uh, right now in the process of making this change happen. Also, the Kubernetes executor for Runner 9.0 will be considered stable and production ready because we introduced the last missing feature uh, support for GitLab container registry for private images, something that is right now supported only by Docker, not yet by the Kubernetes. And very important to note that Runner 9.0 will be not compatible with GitLab before 9.0. Mm, but the other way around, <coughs> runners from branch 1.x uh, will still work with uh, GitLab 9.0. So. Uh, it allow the customers to have this great period of upgrading uh, the runner to the newest release and they start using the new GitHub. Uh, if we think about the plans in the longer term, uh, I think the biggest challenge that we have to face now is to make all CI views to be fully real time. Something that is being worked by the uh, backend and frontend uh, that is a little outside of the CI right now. And we are just waiting for the for their findings, uh, how to make it happen. But the goal in the end is to make any uh, page and uh, graph to be updated when it happens, uh, when it gets updated on the backend and as soon as possible. Because right now it often happens that you have to refresh this view, which is kind of inconvenient and not really uh, 2017 if we look at that. Um, the second goal in long term is to use Kubernetes. I, I did test Kubernetes in different scenarios and I had very good findings with using that. So I would say that we'll be, I will be creating issues and trying to make it, uh, try to use GKE with the uh, Kubernetes cluster, auto scale Kubernetes cluster to run as much as possible. Uh, probably in the future also uh, running the shared runners if, if it's, uh, it will be seen viable. And in longer time, probably uh, Q2 or Q3. Uh, right now for fetching the builds, we use database pooling, uh, which is um, bad in the end. Uh, it's not scalable. Uh, actually, when we hire the next engineer that will be working on the runner, uh, one of uh, his first tasks or the next after the first task will be looking how we can make uh, 
our runners queue uh, use queues, the real queues, maybe uh, public and subscribe or, some, or something other. Uh, I think this is the very big goal, uh, but the goal that will give us a lot of room to uh, for the improvements. I believe that this is everything from me. Uh, thank you very much for attention. And I am very keen to hear the questions now. Spotify playlist, we heard the CI team. You have to share that pick coming. Yes, I will share Philippa. Uh, wow, this is huge. Got move on the quota. Deploy boards look cool. Uh, you draw feedback from large customers on deploy board. Uh, deploy board is for 9.0, it's Kubernetes only. Uh, reg is cache defaults. Is it uh, cache size? No. Is it only how we create a cache and how we fetch the cache? Uh, we actually fetch the, uh, we create a cache for every branch and will be the same unified cache for every branch. Right now, if you create a new branch, uh, the very conservative cache defaults will make and uh, this cache for a new branch uh, be created from a scratch, not really reused, which is kind of defeat the purpose of caching because then you actually always have this really long first one, which is not ideal, not ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> Marine did ask a very good question. If we move all our bits to one type of executor, we might end up having problems if users are using different executors. Is it a good idea to run, to not run the Docker executor at least as part of the fleet? Um, it's really interesting because we have uh, a lot of different executors right now uh, that they are supported. Uh, okay, I will stop sharing. We have a lot of different executors right now that they are supported. We never use them, but we have a very responsive community that just tells us very quickly about something that is not working. Mm. I still agree with you that we should have some part of the fleet running the bare uh, Docker executor, because this is something that is uh, much widely chosen right now, uh, but it shouldn't stop us from uh, using Kubernetes as much as possible. I believe that for our case right now, for some of the uh, builds you use, uh, for most of the builds you use Docker, for some of them we still use the shell, uh, but basically that's it. Uh, we don't use the Kubernetes yet uh, for any builds at this point. Gabriel Mazetto did ask, uh, what do you think, uh, what are you thinking for the queue? Still rely on the Redis or use something else? Because Rabbit uh, or MQ. Mm, I think that this is still too early to answer this question. Uh, I believe that we have so many different solutions to choose. Uh, but the truth is that we should also always be uh, kind of uh, sure that we are not introducing another technology into our stack if it's not really needed. So the course of point, how it will look, how it will try to make it happen. We will try to evaluate as much as possible using Redis and see uh, whether it uh, fulfills our requirements. If it's not, then maybe we look for some other solution. But as of now, I think that this, this is uh, still too early. Marin doesn't like RabbitMQ. Uh, I think that Marin doesn't like introducing another technology into our stack. And, and this is usually the biggest hurdle because this is also a hurdle for our enterprise customers that would have to maintain uh, these components. <laughs> yes, that too. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. I'm not seeing any other questions. So uh, see you on the team call then. <laughs>